I'm Bruno. I'm here to talk with you about the testing applications in Kubernetes and why testing needs a new approach when you are testing applications. Before we start, just a little bit about myself. So uh, I'm Bruno Lopez. Yeah, can you hear me? Fine. There we go. Uh, at the end, can you hear me? Can it's fine? Uh, people online. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Uh, so yeah, my, my background is in software engineering. Uh, DevOps as well, and for the past year, I'm leading this cool product called TestQ that we are going to talk about. So let's start first to talk about the challenges of testing in Kubernetes. Let's do a show of hands. How many, many of you have tested inside the Kubernetes cluster, or do any kinds of tests? There, They're pretty cool. How many of you have to automate those tests that are running there? Okay, nice. <laughs> right, cool. So. You might relate to some of these challenges we are going to talk about today, so I'm just going to list a few. So the, uh, if you use uh, different tests in Kubernetes, you might use different tools, depending on the type of test. You might try to test um, APIs, uh, UIs, and, and a bunch of things. And one of the big problems with those tools, they are not made from the ground up to run inside the Kubernetes cluster. They are not made with Kubernetes in mind. For example, to give an example of a few testing tools, uh, Q6 is a really great tool for load testing. Uh, so PY for API test is a, a really old, old one. Cypress for UI, Postman. Those ones are very good, and they are very good at use cases. So for example, if you want load testing, use Q6 for load testing. But they were not made exactly to run in Kubernetes right away. They give you, they help, they give you documentation. They might give you uh, Docker images on, the, on Docker that they can use to use it as a test runner on, on your cluster. But you cannot just take a, a test in JavaScript and run it in your cluster right away. You need to do some stuff. And if, especially if you want to uh, automate it, there's some steps you have to do. You have to uh, like put it in your pipeline. There, there's no different steps that you um, might have to do. And that makes your pipelines more complex. In, in a usual deployment in your pipeline, you probably have like the build steps, you might have some linters, uh, static code analysis, things like that. At some point, you deploy to your cluster. When you deploy to your cluster, it's hopefully you'll be uh, able to test it, and you want to test it. See if the applications there are running fine, and to see the, if all the microservices are connected to each other, everything is being delivered, and depending on the environment, if you are testing in production or in the staging or wherever, uh, you might have different tests as well that you want to run. So, handling, handling of these different peculiar Varieties and different environments makes this part more complex. Another challenge of also testing in Kubernetes is that it might, it, it's kind of hard if you uh, have a complex structure there, have many microservices with thousands of tests or, or, and logs. Each testing tool has different, uh, different log output and they are running different pods and in different steps of the pipeline. That, that will become hard, especially as you scale. Uh, so, and if you want to see the history, for example, you have a test that, that fails and you want to see one month ago the same logs from that, might be difficult to do that. Another thing, which is also very peculiar, is imagine that you have a, a Cypress um, a test, for, for those of you that know, know Cypress basically, uh, allows you to run tests in the browser, so if you have any UI, you can just basically uh, simulate the human clicking on buttons and, and, and do all that simulation. And one of the things that this tool allows is to produce a video of that test. For example, you are testing your UI, and uh, basically if the test fails, if the UI is broken, you'll be able to see a video of it. And if you are running that test as a runner in Kubernetes, you now have a challenge, which is, how do I get that test artifact, which is that video? How do I save it? And I have like, I track it with the test execution and on my pipeline. So that's also another challenge that you, you'll have to uh, basically fix, which is how do I store, how do I get, and how do I store my test artifacts? The other one is uh, restricted access to your environments. Especially in big corporates, you might not have the access to that cluster that you want to test. You, you are in charge of doing those tests or doing the code, and then you deploy the environment, and then you want to test, but you don't have access. Uh, so, yeah, so that's another challenge here. 
so with that in mind, to challenge his mind, that's uh, where this term of cloud native testing comes up, which is you should think about your tests or your testing solutions in a way that they are cloud native. And uh, you don't need to worry about so much about all these challenges. Should be, should, your tests should be able to scale. You should not have really long pipelines that take a lot of time because you want to test it. Uh, for example, uh, I saw people that have like really hours of work uh, that they just need to wait because the pipeline is running and they are waiting for the test to finish. And especially now in the cloud native era, and we are using Kubernetes, things should be parallelized, things should just scale, and you should not really have you know, synchronous things that you need to wait a long time just, just to see uh, if they are working. The other thing also uh, uh, that you should have in mind is flexibility. You should not be very tight to any CI CD system in per particular. Or, or, or even testing tool, or it should not block you, your, your pipeline should not block you from trying new tools, from adding more tests or changing things. It should be still very flexible. If somebody says, oh, I really found this new tool and I want to add a new test for a pipeline, it should, not be a, it should be very straightforward. It should be very, very fast to do that. And you, should, you don't need to talk with maybe with your DevOps team or, or with different people just to add, to add that. Uh, so you should not lose flexibility with that. And, and the last point from, from these uh, three pillars is uh, automation. Automation is, things, is something that you now should, should kind of come out of the box. You should not really worry so much about automation. Things should just be easy to automate. And you, you don't, usually it is it's like a repetitive work just to automate things and, and things should just work. So that's basically the, the third pillar of, of cognitive testing. So yeah, with all this in mind, uh, I wanted to, to introduce you um, our, our open source project called SQ that basically tries to solve all of these challenges that you just saw. Uh, so we are uh, the Kubernetes native testing framework, which basically um, tries to take all of these tools and, and combine them together. They're open source, as I said, and part of the NCF. And you really focus on that test automation part, management, and also visualization of, of all their tests that run in the Kubernetes cluster. So what can we do for you? Uh, so as I said, mentioned before, on those tools, for you to automate them, you most of the times you need to write complex scripts, you need boilerplate. You cannot just take one test and oh, just run it and, and automate it. There's, there's things that need to happen. Needs, uh, need to, you need to do some code on your pipeline, whatever, if it's GitHub Actions, Jenkins, whatever it is, you'll need to do something there to, to add your test logic there. And also you need to use Docker uh, images or any sort of container image if you want your um, test to, to run inside the Kubernetes cluster because everything runs inside the container, of course. So we also need to provision that uh, test uh, um, executor. Uh, yeah, so circumventing restricted environments, I'm just gonna go past this because I, I talked about it before. Artifact storage, scaling, you know, making uh, your your life is, uh, if you are a tester, you should focus really on testing, on on, uh, to, on writing the test, you should know what, what microservice to write or which things you are need to add more tests of, and should not worry about basically the manual stuff or like just basically the techn technical part. There are these, um, there are a lot of patterns across many projects that everybody solves them uh, in a custom way, and there are tools like these ones that can just make it, you know, in a general way can can solve it uh, very easy for you. So one of one of the ways you can define tests uh, in in Kubernetes is via CRTs. So TestCube allows you to just define in a YAML your tests and then takes uh, care of them. That's basically, basically uh, defined. So just as you take any tool, these ones come out of the box. If you want to add more, you can just create that executor, contribute it, or use it for yourself, and also your, your tool becomes supported. Um, so to, to give an example of a CI/CD system that um, is, has more steps uh, and doesn't use in this example of test queue, and the other one that does. So um, a simple a simple pipeline you see here on the left, so build here in the middle. Usually we have a lot more, uh, let me take this. Can you hear me? Yes. So here, usually we have more steps. 
like linters, because uh, coding analysis, maybe unit tests uh, for sure, then you deploy to an environment. This is an example of one environment, you can have more, and then you have different steps that you could uh, run, like different APIs, uh, tests, UI tests, could be load, uh, you know, can be anything, security, whatever, you mentioned it. So if you want to add more uh, steps here, or different environments, you need to add that logic to your pipeline. Uh, in the example here, I'm just, just going to walk here and show you. You can basically declare your tests as CRTs, so this is a Kubernetes cluster, you can de declare them here. Uh, test cube is prepared to run them for you, so as you declare them, they, be, they become uh, part of your cluster, they are, they are part of that state, and your pipeline becomes very, uh, um, like it becomes very simple to use. You don't have any uh, scripts there or uh, like just uh, logic to configure things. You just have logic on test. So if you want one of your steps to fail if something's not working, you can just say, for, for example, test cube run my test or my test suite and your pipeline will fail if you want it to. And, but everything, all the complexity lives here and not here. So your pipelines, uh, don't have all of that cumbersome uh, scripts that, that you might need to code. This, this is hard. Okay, cool. So let me just do a quick demo for you so you can see it happening live. Yes. So here, I just wrote here a really small script it's a key six test. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show it to you. This is it's a, a key six test that uh, fails half of the times. So, that, so uh, just does a load test on this URL, and after half of the times you, you run it, it they, there's a random here, a random number. Half of the times you fail, half of the times it will pass. So you can use this cube using the UI or the CLI. I'm just gonna do the UI here because it's um, more clear to you to understand what's happening. If I use the CLI, maybe less clear. So here you can see basically all the tests inside your cluster. Let's let's go through this flow of adding one test, and then I'm gonna go through uh, through basically all the rest. So let's just start with one simple test um, right now. So you can basically create a test in your cluster. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is a Kubernetes resource, so basically this is a front end to your cluster. Things will be saved in your cluster. So let's say I'm going to create a test called uh, CD Summit here. Uh, by the way, this is a, a live environment, a demo one. So right now, if you want to go there and mess up my presentation, you can. Uh, so here, you basically select a type of test. Uh, you are Want to run? So all the, the tools that you um, basically configured uh, to uh, to run and test cube allows out of the box many. Uh, so I'm going to select key six, and I'm going to select uh, where's the test source. Uh, for example, if you um, you should have your tests in Git. So for example, oh, thank you. Yeah, much better. So you can define a CRD in your cluster that fetches the test data and the test content from your GitHub repo, and they should live there. So I'm, I'm doing, doing this manually, I'm bringing the test manually for your cluster, but hopefully in an automated way, you have this running on your uh, repo. So let's, just for the purpose of the presentation, I'm gonna just upload a file here, and k 6 test random is the, the that uh, test I just showed you that fails of the times, and I just defined that test on my cluster here, as a CRD, so this is like a YAML, this is a CRD of a type test, this is the metadata, in the namespace you have labels, just, no, just like a normal Kubernetes resource. Um, and now, like uh, the, the CRD is defined there, uh, test cube picks it up, uh, there's the, the operator, and I'm just gonna schedule like a bunch of times. I know, 26 should be enough to nook the server. <laughs> and uh, so basically now they are running in parallel, as uh, Kubernetes shops, and basically uh, some of them are passing, some of them are failing. So basically, the the pods now. So what SQ does? Schedule the shops. 
it tracks what it's doing and, and sees like if the plot, uh, the test failed or, or, or the job failed, it will mark the test as failed or if it passed, it marked as passed. And also fetches the logs from that uh, executor. And the, the, so you can see the logs of what happened there. Uh, yeah, so, so that's, that's mainly what you do when you are trying to run a test. You can quickly like, come here. If you have an automated system, you can, can just see it live. For example, if you have a pipeline that is triggering your tests, you can actually see it. So you can just use this dash part here and basically have a pulse on okay, which tests are passing, which tests are failing here. Um, so it gives you that, that uh, high level view and also metrics. So one, one thing I was, not, I was forgetting to mention is that um, you also want to have metrics about your, your tests. If you have a cluster and application here and you are developing, developing that for one year or more, um, now knowing if, if your tests you know, fail a lot or pass a lot, also very interesting for you. Um, so just just a, a quick uh, summary of, of what you can do here. Uh, basically, have tests, test suites. One thing also that just got released like a few days ago. So I'm not doing a, doing a demo right now because I didn't prepare it. But I, I just wanted to show you as well. Is I, I showed you an example of how a pipeline can trigger tests. But imagine that you have your pipeline just deploying your application, and then test cube knows when to run your test. So in this example, test you could listen to resources on your cluster. For example, you could listen to a, a pod. When a pod with a certain label is modified, you can tell test you to run any type of test that you're defining there. So basically your tests are like you can just make a list of which events or cluster events you want to listen and then the test cube will run this test for you. So you don't even need to add any step on that pipeline because uh, now this is intelligent enough to, to see, okay, this event changed, let me run the test. And for example, if you want then a message on Slack or anything, you can just implement webhooks here uh, and then it will just send those messages. So um, so yeah, so that's, that's basically it. Um, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> Actually, a couple questions. Are these tests uh, specific to namespaces, or can they be used globally? Uh, so that's a good question. So you mean you do, right now you only you use one test cube installation per cluster. So basically, you don't, it's not namespace scoped. It's, it's for the full cluster. So all the namespaces. Oh, okay. And so if I say uh, uh, in your first test there at the top. Yeah. You see some passes, some failures. So if I click on a bar, that's a, a yeah. Yeah. Uh, but so if I, you click on a pass bar, uh, yeah. it's going to show you the logs for the pass, and then if you click on the red bars, exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So basically, you see the history and also the the metrics, and also like you can have time frames, and, and yeah, and all that. Uh, uh, something. So for example, if you want to parameterize your test. You can also pass um, environment variables, so you have like secrets. Right. Can, yeah, and, and then it, they get mounted on your uh, okay. pod as environment variables, and then, then you can pick it up yeah. as well. We're not allowed to do that where I work, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, yes. What happens if test fails? Uh, does it uh, does it have any kind of like rollback or notification mechanism? So we have webhooks, okay. so you can implement if you want to have some logic around that. So test cube will not do anything; it just it just tells you that the test failed. Mm -hmm. But if you have any other mechanism that when it receives a message that this test failed, you want to do any action, you you could. Okay. So should this be run like in your like before the production, like say in your QA? environment should run on those environments but even production i feel like you should run some tests even your own production as well so that's also important maybe not the same of not the same type of self tests right. but but some of it yeah, yeah. We, we have like 50 clusters mm -hmm. in our environment right now yeah. so that's a lot yeah <laughs> and you mentioned that it can monitor labels to uh, to determine when to run tests can it also do annotations or just like 
Can you schedule the tests? Can you, you can schedule the test. You can have cram jobs. So it's not in the UI yet, like it is for maybe in two releases, but uh, using the, the terminal. So let me just show you. Like you can just say test tube create test, uh, and then you can pass, I don't know which plug it is. Let me see if I can find it. There's, there's a flag here somewhere. So basically, it's a, for the front tab, you know, that's yeah. a, yeah. Is it here? No. Found it? Yeah, you can do Okay. So yeah, you just put that and test you will run it, whatever you feel. Yes. Uh, yeah, so great presentation. Uh, one question. So since the uh, tests are now deployed in the cluster, what's like a common strategy to version them and to get them installed on the cluster? Uh, sorry, can you repeat? If you, do you get problems if you what? Uh, what's a common strategy to version them? And get them deployed on the cluster. I mean, do you have, can we have the definition like in a Git repository and just keep up to get them on the cluster? What, what is like? Yeah, that, that's a really great question. So, uh, from uh, our community and our users, we have many companies that do it different way. The way we re recommend is to save in TCRDs as part of your GitHub repo. So, they are version track there, and then you synchronize. For example, using uh, RBCD or any type of CICD, you can be actual uh, GitHub Actions as well if you want to, uh, and then you deploy that to your cluster. And, and this so, so works if you're deploying with Helm charts? Yeah. Some people do. Some people put this in the Helm chart and deploy everything. Yeah. Sometimes you have to. Yeah. Yeah, Helm yeah, is a nice tool to deploy to this as well. Cool. Uh, yes. Um, are the web hooks that are emitted uh, when the test finish, are they configurable at all? Like, did you have, you know, um, configure additional information to be passed in the payload of the web hook uh, or something like that? Um, you know, yes, no. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> so here is the team. So, yeah, also, after the team. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there is, um, we have some data there. Uh, it's not fully cost customizable. We are looking into, there's a, something called CD events. So I'm not sure which one of you is involved in that project. I talked with some guys over email. Um, and I'm really interested in that to see how it would it apply here. Uh, but right now it's not fully customizable. There's some considerations. So uh, like, can you test how long, say, um, in a service, serverless environment, how long, like, how long uh, it took that action run? Because like we only get like fifteen milliseconds. Fifteen milliseconds. So, like, if you were asking if you could track a, a, a test that takes fifteen it milliseconds. It took too long for the execution to happen. Oh, you mean if you have timeouts and you yeah. just yeah, that mm -hmm. preset. Uh, you can have timeouts, so it's on this release, so we are on 1.7, we are releasing timeouts and abort. Yeah, so it's, it's not possible, uh, it will be possible like in a week or two. For if replica sets fail, mm -hmm. uh, does it capture that? So if a replica sets, I mean you have a test that tests if replica sets fail? Yeah. Uh, so you, you would have to write that test. Okay. somehow like just verifying that yeah so basically uh, what, what you have to do is just come here you create a, a test that test that and then you just run it okay seems that's it pretty cool thank you very much thank you. Thank you. Thanks,